It's lesson 15 already, Science 8. And today, we're going to do a similar investigation to what we did in Investigation C. And the reason for that is it's crucial that you understand how forces are operating to cause motion. The reason for this is that later on, we're going to do another phenomenon, and we're going to need to draw on these ideas about forces in motion. For today, I need you to take out your pencil, your journal slip investigation D, and your science journal. We're going to be analyzing some new footage that I shot right before we had to leave school. And this footage shows different crash scenarios happening between different size spheres. Specifically, I'm going to be using a marble and a golf ball. To be sure the spheres collide, I made a ramp just using rulers and blocks like you see on the screen. I made sure that each side of the track was lifted to the same height in order to control the release height of objects for the collision testing. The objects are going to move down the groove in the ramp in order that they stay on the ramp. You can see in this picture that the force of gravity is what's going to be used to set the objects in motion. Thus, I'm making sure to control for the force. That's not really changing. If you can think you can set this up at home, go for it. I would love for you to try out different collisions at home and send in the video footage of you narrating what's going on. You don't have to use the same exact materials I'm using, just use mine for some inspiration. Now remember, there are three parts to every collision. Before the impact, the exact moment of impact, and after the impact. Since we're making different size spheres collide, we know that before the impact, these objects have different masses. Or we can have the same mass coming toward each other. Now, we won't have visual evidence to observe the forces at the exact moment of impact because we don't have those metal hoops. But we already know from the last investigation that each object should exert an equal but opposite force right at the moment they hit. What we really need to focus on today is what happens after the impact. How does each sphere move after they collide with each other? If we observe the direction of the motion afterwards, then we'll know the direction of the net force. Remember, when one force is greater than another, an object will move in the direction of that net force. In our first collision, I made two marbles of the same size or same mass travel toward one another on the ramp. You can see I did record this footage in the classroom. So the first time you're gonna see it in real time, and then we're gonna see it in slow motion. Watch to see the direction of each object after the collision. Here it is in slow motion. Okay, so what did you notice? Describe how each marble moved and in what direction. Pause the screencast now to do this on your journal slip. If you need to re-see the collision, you can always rewind. In our second collision, you can see that I have the marble at rest on the track. I'm actually gonna release the golf ball. Let's watch and see. Go. Here it is in slow motion. Watch after the impact. Okay, so what did you notice? In what direction did the marble move? In what direction did the golf ball move? Pause and make observations on your journal slip. Okay, in the third collision, I let the marble travel toward the golf ball, which stayed stationary on the track. Let's watch and see. And here we go in slow motion. Again, in what direction did each object move after collision? Pause and write this down 
on your journal slip. All right, here's our last collision. I actually released the golf ball and the marble so they're moving towards each other. There we go. There's real time. And we'll see it in slow motion. Okay, so what did you notice here? Again, describe the direction in the, of the motion of the marble and the golf ball. Pause to do this now. So what patterns did you notice? What happens when two objects with the same mass collide? What happens when objects of different masses collide? Remember, we're concerned with the motion after impact. Take a moment, look back at all of the data, and come up with some summary statements, some patterns for each of these questions. Do this now. Today, I'd like you to use your journal slip to answer six questions on a Google form. The form will essentially check your understanding of what you observed today. Use evidence from today and think carefully as the score will be recorded in the gradebook. You can find the link to the form posted under today's distance learning folder. Until tomorrow, keep thinking, keep learning, and if you choose, keep testing out different collisions and send us that footage with you narrating what's happening.